this will be a campaign unlike any other in history. A campaign characterized by the employment of precise munitions on a scale never before seen. The weapons that are being used today have a degree of precision that no one ever dreamt of. Launched from distances, very precise targeting. The minimization of collateral damage, which is, which is such an all-encompassing term, the risk to innocent life. Although I've never seen the statistics, I, you, you would have to believe that since only 7% of the weapons used in the first Gulf War were precision, and 60 to 65% of them were in the second Gulf War, that civilian casualty was much reduced. So I've never seen the statistics, never been privy to them, but intellectually you've got to believe that. The morning of March 19th was the go moment. The whole point of this military exercise was to decapitate the snake, they kept saying, to topple the regime, and the regime was one man. If you could take out the guy in a quick strike, that was almost irresistible, and that prospect presented itself. The precision weaponry affects two very important segments. One is our own decision makers, the ability to employ the weaponry and minimize the risk to innocent life. The President of the United States saw a target of opportunity, and they wanted to take advantage of it, and they did. The decision to attack Iraqi leadership at the opening salvo it was a bold move. It was a new way of making war, and technology was able to provide our leadership that opportunity. We needed something that was going to give us the capability to strike through the weather. Because in the past, in the F-117, we dropped laser-guided bombs. So if you can't see your targets, you can't drop a bomb on it. This day, I had the enhanced GBU. They couldn't see me, I couldn't see them, but my bomb could find a spot on the ground. The precision weaponry provides us opportunities to attack certain targets that we would be hesitant to go after with any other type of machinery. That changes the way you conduct war very dramatically. We now go after targets that 20 years ago we would never have considered because we can hit them with such a high degree of precision. We really didn't know who was going to take the blow of what we were about to do. We've gotten some indications that uh, it may be Sons, it may be Saddam himself. But still extraordinarily people heading towards where... I let the bombs go, let them rip. You can hear those air raid sirens howling. And I said, well, if we did our job tonight, this whole thing might be over tomorrow. The precision weaponry also is extremely important to those whose hearts and minds we're trying to win. <laughs> The problem with smart weapons is they rely on a level of discrimination that is so precise as to be non-existent in a serious war against an adversary who has any intelligence. He essentially has to cooperate with you by standing out in the open. Yes. <laughs> ومن صارت الغارة طلعنا توجهنا المواقع البديلة طبعا مثل ما قلت لك. The mystery of what happened begins here at a palace compound called Dora Farm. One weapon clearly missed. Others landed just outside the wall, destroying other buildings. Inevitably, when we go through and do an analysis of how these weapons perform, it's always less well than the videos told us they were while the war was going on. Final question is, if you look at the target sets, have we gotten so confident in our ability that we are reducing the sort of cushion between military targets and civilian targets? Uh, that's almost certainly true, because we are much more confident about going after targets in, say, populated areas than we would have been uh, 20 or 30 years ago.